All right, how's everybody doing? Hotel. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. It is Friday, February 15th, 2019, and we are live. It's halfway through African American History Month. This month is going by very quickly. Uh, I've been doing a number of presentations. Uh, I'm speaking in three locations this Saturday, February 16th. I was speaking at a church in Inkster, Michigan, uh, Thursday, February 14th. Uh, it's been very busy, okay? I'll be on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation tonight, uh, this evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on uh, LaVanya Perryman's uh, radio show, 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation will broadcast here on Facebook Live. So it's been a, a, a few days, it's been a while since I've been able to broadcast live like this uh, outside of the African History Network show Sunday night. So how's everybody doing? I wanted to talk about a few things. I wanted to talk about this uh, breaking news story dealing with Colin Kaepernick, okay? And you know, I've been covering the Colin Kaepernick story a lot. You see me with my Colin Kaepernick shirt on. I'm not going to stand for a flag that oppresses uh, Black people. And, it's, and the full quote is actually, I'm not going to stand for a flag that oppresses Black people and people of color. That's the full quote, okay? Well, there's a story that broke um, this afternoon dealing with his collusion case against the NFL, okay? So we know he's been blackballed. Uh, unofficially from the NFL, but you have a lot of other uh, third third string, fourth string quarterbacks that have been hired by teams and Kaepernick still hasn't been hired. So he filed a collusion case uh, against the NFL and so did Eric Reed. Now, Eric Reed was the second player in the NFL to take a knee, okay? And Eric Reed was uh, Colin Kaepernick's former teammate on the San Francisco 49ers. And at first, Colin Kaepernick was uh, sitting on the bench, right? But it was a uh, former NFL pro player and former uh, Green Beret, Nate Boyer, who gave them the idea of taking a knee because taking a knee comes from the military. And I wanna get some of my other notes dealing with Colin Kaepernick because I talked about uh, Kaepernick on my show um, a couple Sundays ago, actually during the Super Bowl, during the Super Bowl, because I haven't watched the Super Bowl, haven't watched the NFL game in uh, two years, okay? All right, so um, it was Nate Boyer who gave them the idea of taking a knee, because taking a knee comes from the military, and it's a sign of respect, all right? So that's, so that's where that came from. Okay, so uh, if we look at um, a couple of articles from the New York Times, and Washington Post. Um, the New York Times has an article, NFL and Colin Kaepernick settle collusion case. NFL and Colin Kaepernick settle collusion case. Eric Reed got a settlement in his collusion case today also. So, uh, and everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in. African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with us, okay? All right, so the NFL and Colin Kaepernick uh, the former San Francisco 49ers quarterback who ignited a protest movement against racism and police brutality by kneeling on the sideline during the playing of the National Anthem at Games has settled a case that accused the league of colluding to keep him off a team. Now, the league also settled a similar uh, claim lodged by another player, Eric Reed, who knelt alongside Colin Kaepernick and went unsigned for a period uh, of time before playing last season with the Carolina Panthers. Now, we know with Eric Reed, the, uh, he, so he signed with the Carolina Panthers, but he was randomly drug tested seven or eight times, something like that, because I read a number of stories time after time after time. He was randomly drug tested more so than other players. And the articles were saying that this is, unusual for a player to just be randomly drug tested this many times. So a lot of people think that was a way for the league to get back at Eric Reed, right, for protesting uh, during the national anthem uh, against police brutality, the oppression of people of color, especially African-Americans, uh, protesting against racism, things like this, okay? All right. 
Let's continue. How's everybody doing? All right, so uh, the terms of the settlements were not disclosed. The terms of the settlements with Eric Reed or Colin Kaepernick have not been disclosed. Now, Colin Kaepernick's lawyer, Mark Garagos, issued a similar statement saying, for the past several months, uh, counsel for Mr. Kaepernick and Mr. Reed have engaged in an ongoing dialogue with representatives of the NFL. As a result of those discussions, the parties have decided to resolve the pending grievances. The resolution of this matter is subject to a confidentiality agreement, so there will be no further comment by any party, okay? Now, my question is, is Colin Kaepernick going to get hired by a team now? Eric Reed is back in the league, okay? You settled the collusion uh, there's a there's a settlement in his collusion lawsuit. All right. I doubt if the league was settled if he really didn't have a case because he had a strong case against the league. OK, so are they, is, is Kaepernick going to play now? Are they, is he going to is he going to be offered a job? Now, Kaepernick has not played in the NFL since the 2016 season. He filed grievances under the league's collective bargaining agreement in October 2017. And his lawyers have been busy gathering evidence and testimony from NFL owners. Kaepernick began his protest in August 2016 uh, after several African-American men were shot by police officers. A number of players across the NFL joined him in kneeling during the national anthem, generating a debate over race and player activism, drawing angry tweets from Donald Trump uh, and flummoxing the league over how to respond. Now, keep in mind, Trump says that we should stand for the national anthem. We should salute the flag. But when he had an opportunity to go serve in Vietnam and protect the flag that he says we should stand and salute, he got five deferments because he was too much of a coward to go fight in Vietnam. Not only that, Donald Trump said that his Vietnam was avoiding getting STDs in the 1970s. That's what he said. Go research that. He said his Vietnam was avoiding getting STDs in the 1970s, okay? So when you have Trump, right, who to me is the first Russian president of the United States, okay, and is, is a Russian asset to me, and the, the evidence is going to show this to you also. When you have him uh, uh, who, who calls... Uh, African-American NFL players taking a knee to protest against police brutality and, and racism and things like this. He calls them SOBs, okay? He insults their mothers. He attacks them, calls them SOBs, right? When you have uh, somebody like this, somebody like Trump doing this, you can't really even take them seriously because you see that he's lying. Not only that, uh, if you've seen any of my presentations dealing with the history of the national anthem, I call it the white national anthem. There's a reason why I call it the white national anthem, because it was written by Francis Scott Key, who was a white supremacist slave owner. He wrote it September 13th, 1814, during the War of 1812. So a lot of people point to the third stanza, which says no refuge for the hireling or the slave. It's not the third stanza, it's the entire song. The entire song is a white supremacist song. Okay, so there needs to be a new national anthem in America. If you want, if you want the, if you wanted to really be a national anthem, and if you wanted to represent all of the people of America, it has to be a new national anthem. Now, African Americans know that we have our own national anthem. It's called the Black Black, the Black National Anthem, called "Lift Every Voice and Sing," written by James Weldon Johnson. We created the Black National Anthem because we knew the White National Anthem was not for us. So this is why understanding our history, and this is why we need to teach this history, especially during African-American History Month. I've been doing a number of presentations, and a lot of my presentations I've been doing have been at African-American churches, okay? So um, everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. We're going to go to the article from the Washington Post in just, uh, just a minute here. Um, and I want, everybody, I want to let everybody know, um, those in the Detroit area, I'm doing three presentations Saturday, February 16th, 2019. I'm at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan, um, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., doing a double presentation dealing with uh, the history of how black jockeys, African-American jockeys, how they dominated horse racing. Because a lot of people don't know 
that African-American jockeys used to dominate horse racing. We won a lot of the early Kentucky Derbies and we were systematically forced out of uh, horse racing. And it was a concerted effort. There was a unionized effort. There was a concerted effort from white supremacists to push us out of horse racing. Then I'll also do a presentation uh, in Andy's Knowledge Cafe dealing with uh, the the, um, the Rosewood Massacre of 1923. Now, people have seen the movie Rosewood from 1997, but the real history is different than what you saw in the film. So we'll deal with the Rosewood Massacre of 1923. We'll deal with how an entire black town was destroyed because a woman lied, okay? It was a white woman who lied on a fictitious black man and said that he assaulted her, which was not true and an entire black town was destroyed. We'll deal with that history. Visit africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com for more information on Saturday, February 16th, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Free event donations accepted. I'll also be speaking uh, at 7 p.m. out in Inkster, Michigan, 2025 uh, Middle Belt Road, Middle Belt Road at the Booker Dozier Center. Uh, they, they are having a Middle Passage ceremony, Middle Passage uh, commemoration. And I'll be speaking there uh, also. Okay, so we have all of uh, all the places where I'll be speaking. Uh, it's at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right. Uh, Robert said those were black jockeys. Yeah, everybody, uh, post your comments here. Also, post the name of your African American-owned businesses here as well. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Okay, so if we look at this article from the Washington Post. And I'll be on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation uh, this evening, 7 p.m. on the Livonia uh, Perriman Show, uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. We'll talk about some of these topics. Uh, we'll talk about my upcoming lectures this weekend as well, because I'm, I'm speaking in four different locations this Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry, three locations Saturday, and I'm speaking at another church on Sunday. So it's a busy, busy weekend. Um, Colin Kaepernick, Eric Reed, Settle Collusion Grievances against NFL and team. So this is the article from the Washington Post. And uh, it's a good article. They have a statement from the uh, NFL Players Association also. So for those that are not familiar with it, the NFL Players Association is their union. They negotiate their contracts. They uh, negotiate, they intervene dealing with grievances, things like this. Okay, that's their union. All right. All right, uh, so we've got Sean, we've got James. How's everybody doing? What are you talking about, James? Like the Chinese, okay? Prince R. Us says, uh, Prince R. Us says Nancy, okay? All right, let's continue. And if you like this type of information, you could donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, or at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Click on the yellow donate button on the homepage if you don't have a PayPal account. That helps us to keep doing the research, keep broadcasting, stay on the air, uh, finance the African History Network radio show, pay the bills, et cetera. So we definitely need your support. So former NFL uh, quarterback Colin Kaepernick has settled his collusion grievance against the league and teams. Terms of the settlement were not announced. The NFL and Kaepernick's attorney, Mark Garagos, announced the settlement Friday without providing further details. A separate grievance by Carolina Panthers safety, Eric Reed, also was resolved, okay? And um, they have the statement here from the Players Association, okay? The NFL Players Association also confirmed uh, the settlement. They said, quote, today we were informed by the NFL of the settlement of, of the Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed collusion cases. Quote, we are not privy to the details of the settlement, but support the decision, the, the, the decision by the players and their counsel. We continuously supported Colin and Eric from the start of their protests, uh, participated with their lawyers throughout their legal proceedings and were prepared to participate in uh, the upcoming trial in pursuit of both truth and justice for what we believe the NFL and its clubs did to them, okay? Truth and justice, uh, it, um, they were pursuing uh, both truth and justice for what they believe the NFL and its clubs did to Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed. We are glad that Eric has earned a job and a new contract 
and we continue to hope that Colin gets his opportunity as well, end quote. So that's from the NFL Players Association, okay? Uh, let me see. I want to get, okay. And the rest is, uh, okay. So the rest is redundant. All right. Now, some of you all saw the articles that we posted dealing with Kaepernick being removed from a uh, official statement from the Wisconsin State Legislature regarding African American History Month. We're gonna to come to that story uh, in just a minute here, okay? Uh, let's go to some of your comments here, just a second. And who, who is on here from Detroit or the Detroit area, okay? Who's on here from the Detroit area? How's everybody doing? Hopefully you all are learning a lot during African American History Month. If you read the extensive article that I've written dealing with the history of African American History Month, I talk about how it was never designed to be the only time of the year we study our history. It's supposed to be a celebration of our history for African American school children. It was supposed to celebrate, it was supposed, they were supposed to show during that period of time what they have been studying year round. It was never designed. It started out in 1926 as Negro History Week, created by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who's, 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 who uh, was uh, a co-founder of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. And it was never designed to be the only time of the year that we study our history. So the way that we celebrate it is largely backwards, okay? The way we celebrate African American History Month is largely backwards. And it's really, and I've done a lot of extensive research on Dr. Carter G. Woodson, okay? and um, I have one of the books on uh, Woodson right here. This one right here, fantastic book. Most people never studied Dr. Carter G. Woodson besides just an article that was written about him. Carter G. Woodson in Washington, D.C., The Father of Black History. This is a fantastic book by Dr. Uh, Pero uh, Dagbovi. Uh, Dagbovi is a history professor um, in the history department at Michigan State University. And he was speaking at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History back in 2015, February 2015. Asala brought him in, Association for the Study of African American Life and History. So people in Detroit know about Asala and Jamon Jordan, who's the president of Asala. That's the organization that Dr. Carter G. Woodson co-founded. So they brought him in to deal with some of the history of Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who created Negro History Week. Okay. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is not something that white people gave us. This is not something that white people didn't give us the month of February. He took that, he created that, okay? So we need to stop with all this nonsense because we disrespect things that we create, but other ethnic groups created their own monthly cultural celebrations also. Look, the presentation I did last night at the church, I talked about this, May is Jewish American History Month, which started in 2006. We know that uh, September going into October, uh, Hispanics have two monthly national cultural celebrations, National Hispanic, national Hispanic Heritage Month. They have two monthly cultural celebrations. You have a, a Irish American Month. You have a Jamaican, uh, a, a, a Haitian American Month, things like this. Other ethnic groups have their monthly cultural celebrations. OK, when you study when they started, almost all of them, if not all of them, started after 1976. 1976 is when Negro History Week transformed into Black History Month and transformed from being a week to a monthly celebration. That's 1976. So other people saw what we did. And in 1976, it was officially recognized by the federal government, President Gerald Ford gave an address, and I've read the address that he gave, officially recognizing Black History Month. Now, we had been celebrating, uh, celebrating it for 50 years prior to them officially recognizing it. We didn't need that recognition. It's good that they did it, but, it, but, but they, don't, they don't govern what we do. The governing body for African American History Month is a solid the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, which we created. We didn't ask permission. So we have this wrong. And when you keep going to these people to ask permission to get them to recognize your holidays, you give them too much power. This is the problem with Dr. King Day. I'm all for Dr. King Day, but we should have never gone to the federal government to ask permission to have a national holiday for Dr. King. If you want one, just take one. 
Don't ask permission. There's the federal government that killed them. Why are you going to them? Why are you going to the government to ask for a federal holiday for Dr. King? Take one. We celebrate Malcolm X's birthday, May 19th. We don't go to the government to ask permission to celebrate Malcolm X's uh, birthday. We don't go to the government and ask for a federal holiday for Malcolm. We celebrate Malcolm's birthday. We celebrate Marcus Garvey's birthday, August 17th. We don't ask permission from the government to do that. We don't ask for a national holiday for Marcus Garvey when it was the government that set Garvey up in the first place. Come on, stop asking permission for these things. This is why when we study Dr. Carter G. What's it? He ain't asked permission, he created it. That's self-determination. Self-determination is not just supposed to be talked about and practiced during Kwanzaa. Second principle, Kuji, Kuji Chakali is second principle of the Nguza Saba. That's supposed to be practiced and emulated and discussed year round. So we, so it's too late in the game to be playing these games like this. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also, okay? And visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. You can see where I will be speaking uh, this weekend in uh, the Detroit area. I'm at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe on Saturday, February 16th. I'm at the Booker Dozier Center in Inkster, Michigan. Uh, I'm there at 7 p.m. on Saturday. I'm at a church breakfast. I'm at a prayer breakfast because I get, I mean, this month I've been uh, invited to speak at a lot of churches, a lot of black churches, right? African-American churches. So I'm at, um, I want to give them credit here because they asked me to speak. I'll pull this up. I'm at a prayer breakfast from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Saturday morning, February 16th. Then I got to get ready. I have to head over to Nandy's Knowledge Cafe because my presentation is there from two to six. Then I have to leave there and drive out to Inkster, Michigan for the Middle Passage Memorial where I'll be speaking also. OK, and then I'm speaking at another church on uh, on Sunday. So the prayer breakfast where I'm speaking uh, on Saturday, yeah, the event is 9 a.m. to 11 uh, a.m. They have me speaking there for a few minutes. Uh, Geth Samani Missionary Baptist Church, OK, is located. Do they have the address on here? Uh, oh, damn, they don't have the address on here. OK, um, I'll give it to you. And uh, the um, on the on the website, they have. Uh, I'll pull it up here. Um, the city of Inkster, Michigan, is doing something fantastic. Now, if you know anything about Malcolm X, you know when Malcolm was paroled in August of 1952, Malcolm went to live in Inkster, Michigan. Inkster is a suburb of Detroit. It's a black suburb of Detroit because um, his his brother lived there in in, in uh, Inkster. Okay, I think it was Filbert. Uh, I think it was Filbert that lived there, I think. Uh, so from 52 to 64, he had residence there. Now we know he was in Harlem, things like this, right? But he had some type of residence there from uh, 1952 to 64, okay? And there's an effort to turn that house that Malcolm lived in in Inkster, Michigan, into to preserve it and turn it into a historical site. If, they, if, it's, not, if it's not already a historical site, I, I saw an article about that from last year, all right? Um, guess some money, where is that here? All right. Well, you go to our website, you just, just, just Google it. I'm looking here and uh, yeah, they don't, they don't have the uh, address there. So it's in Eastern Michigan, just Google it uh, or use uh, Google Maps. Okay, let, um, let's continue here. Let's go to some of your comments. Okay, Jay Butler said, much respect for you speaking in the churches because we need to hear the history of Africa. Absolutely. They definitely need it in the churches also, right? And they've been inviting me to speak. I've gotten uh, from some of the, so 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 the city of Inkster, Michigan, the city government, they, they have organized 28 days of events for African American History Month. They have something each day. And they work with the churches and what they're doing. If you go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, we have a flyer there. One of the things they're doing is they're showing the documentary um, from PBS and Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr., Many Rivers to Cross, the African Americans, Many Rivers to Cross. Okay. And it's in six parts. Okay. It's a six part documentary. So they're showing it in six different churches. Uh, each, uh, each installment is being shown at a different church. There's a discussion afterwards. So I'm leading the discussion. So I'm recording 
these presentations I'm doing and these discussions, we put, I put them on YouTube, our YouTube channel. We put them here on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Follow me on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, because uh, this morning I just uploaded the um, discussion dealing with part three of Many Rivers to Cross. I just, and we just did that uh, February 12th, I think it was, February 12th, yeah. Because last night we did part four. So I have to upload that hopefully sometime this weekend. It's going to be a busy weekend. All right. Um, and then also we'll let you know how you can uh, register for the online courses that I teach and order our DVD lectures because this helps to finance the African History Network and helps to keep us afloat, okay, and keep doing the research. All right. Uh, let's go to some of your comments here. Okay, James, churches are clueless sometimes. But see, the, 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 the thing is, is that a lot of them want to learn. Uh, a lot of them, the churches that I've spoken in, a lot of them want to learn. Some of them may not know the information, but they want to learn. And we can't become, we cannot become so conscious that we become unconscious to the fact that everyone is not as conscious as we are. So we have to be willing to teach. Many of them want to learn. We just have to teach it to them the proper way, okay? All right. Brandon was responding to Nick said he doesn't want to play anymore. He wants a platform. He wanted 20 million a year uh, when everyone else was making 250,000. Yeah, but so that was in a uh, another league. He would be a huge draw to that league. So it's not just, uh, it, yeah, other people making $250,000 for three years. He'd be a fool. He'd be a fool to go out there and risk injury for $250,000 for three years if he wants to get back in the NFL. That, that wouldn't even make sense. So 20 million is worth the risk. So that, so it, that didn't even make sense for him to go play in that league for $250,000 a year. Uh, Ganjaman, how you doing, Maria? Uh, Joy uh, Nash said facts. Um, Okay, Excel said, remember black history is world history and it's 365, yes. So when you study Dr. Carter G. Woodson, see Dr. Carter G. Woodson created the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History to research, document, and preserve the history, accomplishments, and achievements of African-Americans in this country, but also uh, African people on the continent of Africa as well. It wasn't just dealing with this country. And when you and when you look at some of the, the, the annual themes of African American History Month, coming from the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, I've gone and researched the annual themes going back to 1928. Many of those themes dealt with Africa, African culture, the continent of Africa, Ethiopia, things like this. So the whole the whole way we celebrate quote unquote, Black History Month, which is now officially African American History Month, not because Donald Trump said so two years ago, but the Association for the Study of African American Life and History changed it to African American History Month a few years ago. See, we don't take our cues from them. We created this, so they don't control what we do. So each year, if you go to asala.org, okay, asala.org, A-S-A-L-H dot O-R-G, asala.org, is the official website and they have resources teaching tools for teachers to use in schools for you to use with homeschooling and there's an annual theme so this year's theme of african american history month is black migrations black migrations because august 20th 1619 and august 20th 2019 was the 400th year anniversary of those 20 and odd africans coming into Jamestown, Virginia. Now, this is not the first time that African people were in this land. We've been here going back at least 51,700 years ago. And if you read the first Americans were Africans documented evidence by Dr. David M. Hotep, you know this. You know that's not when we first came into this land. That's, that may have been when they first came into Jamestown, Virginia. And even at that point in time, when they come into Jamestown, Virginia in 1619, slavery, what we call slavery, doesn't even exist in those British colonies. Massachusetts, Delaware, uh, James, uh, Virginia, slavery don't even exist there, indentured servitude does exist. 
So if you heard me calling the Reverend Al Sharpton show on um, Wednesday, February 13th, and I was breaking down the history from the book Before the Mayflower by Lerone Bennett Jr. And, and citing the history that Lerone Bennett Jr. lays out, and also citing two articles from the USA Today dealing with Governor Northam. If you, if you heard me, you understand I was dealing with a history lesson. He really didn't understand that history because he, he doesn't, you know, I like him. I listen, I've been listening to his show 13 years, but in some, some things dealing with history, he doesn't understand. Okay, so this is why, unfortunately, many African-Americans don't understand our history and many white people don't understand the history of this country. Yeah, they came before Columbus. Yeah, but they, 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 they came before Columbus came out in 1976. Now there was some re, some revisions, some uh, there was some revisions of it, uh, some later um, printings of it. But there have been a lot of archaeological, scientific discoveries since 76 or since 1980. So Dr. David M. Hotep's book came out in 2011. And his new book should be out at the end of this month, hopefully. The First Americans with Africans Revisited. And that has about 200 additional pages more research. But he deals with the African presence in this country going back at least 51,700 years ago. Okay. The Moors were here before Jamestown, Virginia, yes. But the Khoisan were here before the Moors were here. The Khoisan, the Khoisan have the oldest DNA on the planet. They come from Southern Africa. They're the ancestors to the Ainu and the Twa. The Twa derisively and negatively called pygmies in uh, European anthropology, et cetera. So before the Moors, and I'm familiar with the Moors and the Moors going into Europe in 711 AD, Spain and Portugal, which was called the Iberian Peninsula there, and the uh, three Moors dynasties, the Almohad, the Almoravid, and the Umayyad dynasties. But before there was anything called Moors, you had the Khoisan who were, who were here in this land. And they're building pyramid mounds up and down the Mississippi River, what we call the Mississippi River. Uh, so, and they go all around the world. Okay. Um, okay, Maria's in Las Vegas. Okay. Jason said, I celebrate Black History 12 months a year. Right. Steph said, I'm going to look for that book. Okay, Sharisa. All right, African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast also. And um, we have the eight DVD bundle pack, the Africans that were here before Columbus, the Africans that were here before Columbus also. Okay. Uh, you can order that from my website, africanhistorynetwork.com. It's on sale this weekend. Uh, it's on sale, $50. I think it's regularly 100 and something. The Africans that were here before Columbus, it includes a uh, double lecture I've done with Dr. David M. Hotep, who wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. It includes a lecture from uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. Uh, they came before Columbus. One from Dr. John Henry Clark, dealing with... Um, uh, Christopher Columbus in the African Holocaust, uh, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism, and uh, some uh, some other DVDs in there also, okay? So that's the Africans that were here before Columbus. So we just posted that link. It's also at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right. So some of you all saw the article that we posted dealing with Colin Kaepernick and the Wisconsin State Legislature, okay? And um, you can still uh, post the name of your businesses here, African-American business owners, all right? Um, it's entitled, so NBCnews.com had an article about this and other publications as well. Wisconsin GOP spikes Colin Kaepernick's name from Black History Month resolution. Wisconsin GOP spikes Colin Kaepernick's name from Black History Month resolution. The Republican lawmakers, move to bench the quarterback from the resolution is a textbook example of white privilege, said State Representative David Crowley, okay? So here's what happened. And this article is from February 13th, 2019. Here's what happened. Wisconsin Republicans 
stripped Colin Kaepernick's name from a resolution recognizing Black History Month. And they said that the former NFL quarterback was, quote unquote, too controversial to be included, too controversial to be included. Hmm, really? The, the state legislature's Black caucus drafted the resolution, which named several African-American leaders, including the Wisconsin-born Colin Kaepernick, who famously kneeled during the national anthem, the white national anthem, while on the San Francisco 49ers to protest system systemic racism in the United States. And here's a direct quote. So the first article, I've done two lectures dealing with Colin Kaepernick. You see me with my Colin Kaepernick shirt on. You saw during the Super Bowl, February 3rd, when I did my radio show live, I ain't talking about the Super Bowl that was going on. Haven't watched the NFL game in two years. Not gonna watch the NFL uh, again until Colin Kaepernick is back in the league or he retires, okay? But I talked about what was going on with Kaepernick then, all right? And you can watch the broadcast at our uh, Facebook fan page, The African History Networks from February 3rd. It's also on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, right? But the first article written about Colin Kaepernick's protest was from August 27, 2016. It was from NFL.com. It was written by Steve Weish. It was called Colin Kaepernick Explains Why He Sat During national anthem. Colin Kaepernick explains why he sat during national anthem. This was the first article written about the protest. And Kaepernick said, quote, I am not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. So a lot of people, right, just focus on him saying black people. But he's dealing with white supremacy and racism and oppression, not just of African Americans, but also people of color, people leave that other part out, okay? And he said, to me, this is bigger than football and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with murder. So he's sacrificing his career. He's sacrificing economic gain because he had um, endorsements like with Beats Audio at this time. He sacrificed that for principle. He sacrificed that to stand up for a larger cause, to speak out against the, the not just police brutality, but systemic oppression of African-Americans and people, people of color. And he, he went on to say that now this is what people miss, right? He said that in the, in the, uh, in the article from August 28, 2016, DailyMail.co.uk had an article. Defiant 49er quarterback Colin Kaepernick faces mounting anger as he insists he will continue to sit for the national anthem. Read that article. Other articles have this quote in it that I'm about to share with you also. Other articles have this quote uh, in it as well that I'm about to share with you, okay? This is a very, very important quote. Defiant 49er quarterback Colin Kaepernick faces mounting anger as he insists he will continue to sit for the national anthem at NFL games in protest at the oppression of black people. OK, he said, quote, I'm going to continue to stand with the people that are being oppressed. OK, he said to me, this is something that has to change. He goes on to say. When there's significant change, and I feel like that flag represents what it's supposed to represent, this country is representing people the way it's supposed to, I'll stand. So when people attack his protest, they never cite that quote from him. He's saying, wait a second, when the conditions change, when the conditions of systemic racism and police brutality change in this country, I'll stand for the flag. So instead of the detractors who want to attack him, like this Wisconsin state legislature of Republicans, instead of them saying, wait a second, how can we work to change the systemic racism that he's protesting against? They just want to silence him, blackball him, tell him to shut up, tell him to shut up, call him SOBs, things like this. They never want to address the, the systemic racism, the white supremacy and racism, they never want to address the conditions that he's protesting against. Okay, so 
we go back to the article from NBCnews.com, right? And the other thing is, I think I have it. I think I have it here. What these same people don't ever say is that Jackie Robinson, who they love to talk about, Jackie Robinson later in life wrote in his autobiography, which came out in 1972, called I Never Had It Made. Jackie Robinson, who served in World War II, talked about why he could never stand for the national anthem again, and he could never salute the flag, and he couldn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance also. Jackie Robinson, he talked about that as well, who they like to hold up as a good Negro, okay? Now, the root, the root.com had an article from August 29th, 2016, called Did You Know That Jackie Robinson Said, quote, I cannot stand and sing the anthem. I cannot salute the flag, end quote, okay? This is from the root.com. They have an article about this. Now, Jackie Robinson in his 1972 autobiography, I Never Had It Made, described the moment when he realized that he could not stand and sing the anthem nor salute the flag. Robinson strongly indicted this nation on charges of racism, classism, and bigotry. See, when they talk about Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier, barrier, they try to make Jackie Robinson out to be a punk. He was not. They don't tell the real history of Jackie Robinson, and they don't talk about Jackie Robinson later in life, and they don't talk about what he talked about in his autobiography. Jackie Robinson said, there I was, the black, the, the black grandson of a slave, the son of a black sharecropper, part of a historic occasion, a symbolic hero to my people. The air was sparkling. The sunlight was warm. The band struck up the national anthem. The flag billowed in the wind. It should have been a glorious moment for me as the stirring words of the national anthem poured through the stands. Perhaps it was, perhaps, perhaps it was, but then again, perhaps the anthem could be called the theme song for a drama called The Noble Experiment. Today, as I look back on that opening game of my first World Series, I must tell you that it was Mr. Ricky's drama, Branch Ricky, general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Mr. Ricky's drama, and that I was only a principal actor. As I write this 20 years later, I cannot stand and sing the anthem. Let me repeat this. This is Jackie Robinson saying this. As I, as, as I write this 20 years later, I cannot stand and sing the anthem. I cannot salute the flag. I know that I am a black man in a white world. In 1972, in 1947, at my birth in 1919, I know that I never had it made. Now, this is a brother who served in World War II. And, and he's saying this. Okay? But they, but they want to attack Kaepernick for taking the knee during the national anthem, but don't say anything about Jackie Robinson, saying that he can't stand for the national anthem anymore. He can't salute the flag. So if we go and look at what happened in Wisconsin, so the state legislatures uh, of, the, of the Black Caucus there in Wisconsin drafted the, the, the Black History Month, African-American History Month resolution, which named several African-American leaders, okay, including the Wisconsin-born Colin Kaepernick. Now, Kaepernick's inclusion drew the ire of the Wisconsin Republicans who amended the resolution taking out his name, okay? They amended the resolution taking out his name. Assembly Majority Leader Jim Steineke, S-T-E-I-N-E-K-E, -E, who was white, said Tuesday that Kaepernick's name was too controversial. Oh, he's a scary black man with an afro or cornrows. He's a scary black man. His, his having his just just the just the sight of his name in there is too controversial and had to go quote for obvious reasons this is what he said he said that Kaepernick's name was too controversial and had to go for obvious name um do you teach your, do you teach these same children about George Washington George Washington was a white supremacist slave owner you teach them about Thomas Jefferson is Thomas Jefferson too controversial? Thomas Jefferson was uh, having sexual relations with one of his slaves named Sally Hemings. Thomas Jefferson had a number of children by her. Thomas Jefferson was a white supremacist slave owner who thought that African people were mentally inferior, who thought that they couldn't feel sorrow. So um, how is it you teach them about that? And that's okay, but there's a problem with Colin Kaepernick in a resolution during quote unquote Black History Month. How was that? 
So Assembly Majority Leader uh, Jim Steinecke, he said that Kaepernick's, Kaepernick's name was too controversial and had to go for obvious reasons. So the GOP move left Democrats in the tough spot of voting against the Black Caucus resolution or approving the amended proposal that omitted Kaepernick's name. The resolution without Kaepernick passed unanimously Tuesday. Democrats reintroduced the original Black Caucus resolution Wednesday afternoon, but it was defeated in a party line vote in the GOP controlled Senate. Then in another party line vote, the Senate passed a Kaepernick less, a Kaepernick less Black History Month resolution, meaning uh, a resolution without Kaepernick's name in it. Now, Senator Lena, Lena Taylor, Democrat from Milwaukee, I've talked to this, this, this is kind of this is, this is a bad sister, Lena Taylor. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it. She said, doing what is right takes courage. Colin Kaepernick showed courage. Okay, she said this from the uh, state Senate floor. Okay, she's African American. Okay. Um, now, Senate Senator, State Senator uh, John Eppernbach, Eppernbach, Democrat from Middleton, uh, there in Wisconsin, a joke that he personally dislikes Colin Kaepernick because the quarterback played spectacularly in a 2013 playoff victory over the Green Bay Packers. The lawmaker excoriated his Republican colleagues for targeting Kaepernick. He said, quote, there, there, there's never been a selective editing of a resolution that I can remember. We're telling African-Americans again what you can do and can't do, exactly. But the problem is why we need a resolution from these people in the first place. Now I understand the Black Caucus put together a resolution. They probably did the right thing, but we don't need we don't need these we don't need the white Republicans to validate anything. Now Kaepernick, who's thirty one, was born in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to a single mother and adopted to a white family, which moved to California, where he excelled in baseball and football. Okay, all right. So you can check out the rest of this. Also, we'll post this article. This is from. Uh, uh, NBCnews.com from February 13, 2019. Wisconsin GOP spikes Colin Kaepernick's name from Black History Month resolution. Okay. My thing is stop giving them, stop giving them the opportunity to tell you no. Don't go ask, don't, don't go ask them to recognize Black History Month. Don't do that. Okay. We don't need their permission. We don't need their recognition. Okay, and oftentimes when they recognize it, they water it down and they just deal with personalities. That's not what African American History Month was about. It wasn't just it wasn't just about personalities. It's about understanding movements and migrations of African Americans in the in, in the country. Accomplishments, accomplishments, and achievements. The accomplishments are not defined by by African Americans who invented things to make white people's lives easier. That's, that's not the purpose. The, the purpose of it is not just to talk about the first black person to do this in the white people's world, the first black person to do that. Yes, we want to, uh, yes, we want to deal with that history. But oftentimes a lot of African American month celebrations I see get watered down to the first black person to do this in a white people's company or in their organization or to hold this position. I'm not attacking the accomplishment. I'm saying we don't even understand what the hell it is we're celebrating. We don't understand how to celebrate it, okay? This is, this is why we have to uh, read books like this that deal with the history of Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Carter G. Woodson in Washington, D.C., the father of black history, okay? By uh, Dr. Pero uh, Dagbovi, okay? And I'm gonna post the link to the articles, extensive article that I wrote dealing with the history of African-American History Month and dealing with Dr. Carter G. Whitson. Because everywhere I go, you know, I ask people, you know, explain me the history of African-American History Month. Besides them saying it started in 1926 as a week, most of us don't know that history. So why are you celebrating it? If we're going to celebrate something, we need to know the history of what the hell it is we're celebrating. We need to know why we're celebrating it. This is the same thing I talk about with the, the white, the European holidays. Most of us don't understand the history of the European holidays we're celebrating. Why are you celebrating them there? 
Okay, so we just posted a link to that article. And also you could read all of my articles at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. Okay, just click on the link, um, read articles by Michael M. Hotel. All right, and you can read them there. Okay, African American business owners, hey, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise on the audio podcast of our broadcast and our radio show, the African History Network show that I do every Sunday night. We have thousands of listeners across the country to each uh, podcast episode. We're on seven different podcast platforms, iTunes, CastBox, uh, Stitcher. And we take your 30 second to 60 second audio commercial, put into our podcast, and uh, each episode is listened to, listened to by thousands of people so we can help you get new customers, all right? Um, you can register for the online courses that I teach. This is a good time to do that. We have them in a bundle pack uh, in, in the sale ends this weekend because it's a fantastic sale. It's a 10 course online bundle pack. Uh, it's on sale. Uh, it's on sale right now, $40, okay? Regularly $130. And uh, it's, 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 it's not going to be 40 much longer, but it includes the 14-hour, um, seven-session online course that I've done called Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school, which is a 14-hour, seven-session online course uh, that I teach also, Okay. So check that, uh, we just posted a link here. It's also at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, that online course also includes Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization, um, an online class I did dealing with the film Black Panther. And um, the online courses, I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation. We have video clips, things like that, okay? So all this helps to support the African History Network, helps us to keep doing the research, uh, finance the radio show, stay on the air, pay the bills, et cetera, okay? All right, and then when I have to travel, like in the March, I'm, I'm speaking at the, uh, the Natural Hair Care Expo in Baltimore. It's a two-day, they have a big, huge Natural Hair Care Expo in Baltimore that Malika uh, Cooper organizes. And I speak there, I do um, workshops dealing with great African women in history. Or uh, This year, I think my workshop is going to deal with some of the history and politics of African uh, hairstyles and African-American hairstyles, things like that. Um, but yeah, that helps to pay to be able to travel to these different locations and uh, speak, et cetera, okay? All right, so I'll, I'll be on uh, 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation, uh, Friday, February 15, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. On, on Livonia Perriman show. We'll broadcast here on Facebook Live. I'll do my radio show Sunday night, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also Sunday, I'm speaking at another church. I'm speaking at St. Francis MBC Church, February 17th, Sunday, 3 p.m. This is their African-American History Month celebration. They had me come speak last year. I'm back this year, uh, 3 p.m. So I'll speak about an hour and a half. It's a free event. Food is available for purchase. I'll have my DVD lectures there. These other events where I'm speaking on Saturday, my DVD lectures, I'll have them also. Uh, St. Francis MBC uh, Church, 7021 West Warren Avenue, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, 7021 West Warren Avenue, De uh, uh, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Deacon McConnell set that up for me, along with uh, Reverend Thomas Cheeks, who's the pastor. And we have all this information at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Okay, the next showing, of uh, the uh, the fifth part of the African Americans Many Rivers to Cross that the city of Inkster, Michigan is doing is taking place on Tuesday, February 18th, 6 p.m. to about 8 p.m., 8.30 at Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church located at 3655 Springfield, Spring Hill Street, 3655 Spring Hill Street, Inkster, Michigan. So after the showing, I lead the discussion, I do a short presentation, answer questions, et cetera. And then the last showing uh, for part six is taking place at New Birth Church, New Birth Church, uh, 27628 Avondale, 
Street in Inkster, Michigan, Thursday, February 21st. Thursday, February 21st. February 21st was the day Malcolm X was assassinated. So we all know that date, 1965, okay? All right, visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com for more information. I've got to get out of here. You can donate to the African History Network as well, help support us, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. If you like this type of information, if you learn from the type of information we provide, uh, especially me, but that I provide, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, if you don't have a PayPal account, go to uh, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com or website AfricanHistoryNetwork.com click on the yellow donate button there. Okay, so you can donate $10, 15, 25, 50, $100. You can also set it up for a recurring monthly donation if you want to, you can set up for a recurring monthly donation. All right, hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating and empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's corrects your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. Right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.